Hi everybody, welcome back to uh, Majestic Collectibles. This is uh, podcast number 12, so you want to be a uh, show dealer or a convention dealer or con dealer, however however you want to term it, it's, it's up to you on that one. I uh, just thought I'd talk about this a little bit. Uh, there seems to be some sort of romantic, uh, mystical uh, uh, allure about setting up at a convention. And, and you know, there's some truth to that. Um, they're not boring. Well, they're usually not boring. If it is boring, it's a really bad convention. Um, so, you know, a few few people have asked, and I thought, well, okay, I'll, I'll do a topic on it quick. And, uh, again, this is from the, the seller's uh, perspective, because that's, that's what I have. Uh, you know, a lot of experience at that. Uh, first started setting up at uh, flea markets back in the uh, uh, late 80s, and then uh, kind of graduated up to, you know, smaller conventions and, uh, you know, in the 90s. And I don't do... I do not set up at many of them, uh, especially if they don't come right to my backyard here in Des Moines. I don't, uh, I don't travel around the country. I don't go very far. Uh, a lot of people do, and uh, you know that's you know there's some guys that's all they do. You know, 30 plus um, weeks a year on the road, and they really enjoy that. Uh, I do not. So I don't do it. So that's that's pretty much why I don't. And we'll go through some of that just from my perspective on this. If you guys hear some um, paper rustling, I apologize. I've got uh, some notes here, so I'm not uh, not freestyling it like the last podcast. Uh, thank you for all those that have uh, uh, been tuning in and listening to the podcast and watching the videos. If, if you guys get a chance, click like, uh, hit subscribe. Let me uh, let me know you're out there. It's always kind of nice to know somebody's listening, even if they uh, uh, maybe don't uh, you know necessarily agree with what I'm saying. They took their time to do that, and I I appreciate that. So thank you. Uh, so this con dealer thing, uh, convention dealer, I <laughs> don't want to make it sound like it's some sort of illegal thing, uh, show dealer uh, situation. Uh, this is um, this is just from right here in, in Des Moines. These are the hard numbers of the shows, uh, most of which I have set up at, but not all of them. And I'll go over that here. And so when I started out doing flea markets, you know, it was literally 15 bucks for you know, probably at least a 10 by 10 space, if not bigger, and it's pretty hard uh, uh, not to make money at them. And uh, I'm going to start out uh, current day, uh, kind of going from, uh, I guess, bottom to top in, I don't know, prestige or probably more likely cost and effort. And uh, right now I'm setting up at uh, Blue Ribbon uh, Flea Market in Spirit Lake, Iowa. It's at the Dickinson County uh, fairgrounds in Spirit Lake and been there uh, since uh, day one. I didn't miss a few years when I moved down here because I used to live closer so I did have uh, a few years off uh, so it hasn't been consecutive but uh, uh, my friends at Coley Collectibles, Chad and Corey, uh, they were I believe the very first ones to sign up and they told me and I signed up and uh, we have been there uh, basically uh, I moved in a couple of different spots in the uh, in the sheep barn uh, poultry building um, they've pretty much been in the same corner from day one I don't think they've ever been in a different spot and we had been setting up at another uh, nearby flea market that was on the west uh, side over in uh, the Milford side of uh, Spirit Lake or the Great Lakes Okaboji area and they had sold off the property and kind of left us all hanging, to be honest with you. Uh, so we were really grateful the Dickinson County Fairgrounds started this up. And we moved over there, and it's probably been, uh, I'm thinking, close to 20 years. I don't know exactly. Uh, heading there on Memorial Day, so uh, honestly, not too long after you listen to this, I will be up there. So, uh, you know, stop by my booth and uh, and say hi. Um, love, love to chat with you and, and, um, you know, meet you. And, um, that right now is $156 and that's like a 20, 26 or 28 foot long, 10 foot deep, 12 foot deep, excuse me, space. And that's, uh, that's with seven tables. And, uh, the reason it costs 156 is because I rent the table. So it'd only be around a hundred bucks. 
uh, for that size of space. They've never never raised the uh, the cost, um, which is just amazing in this day and age that the cost has never gone up. Uh, it is hit or miss. Uh, they're not like they used to be. You know, the population here uh, is getting older and and uh, is shrinking down one way or another. And so we usually have a lot of crowd. Uh, but not necessarily always uh, uh, a lot of sales, although I generally do fairly well there. And you figure 156 for the booth, uh, $65 a night for the uh, the hotel room plus gas. So I've got about 600 bucks more or less uh, into this show before I have sold one one thing. So I'm I'm 600 in the hole. I usually uh, have been taking out Facebook ads. If you're up in that area, you may have seen them already uh, for uh, buying collectibles and things. You know to bring them into the uh, um, the show and do that. Uh, mainly out of necessity because uh, I don't always sell enough. Um, you know, just selling to to make it worthwhile. So I really need to try and. I, you know, pick up a collection uh, or two while I'm up there. And it's a lot of work. You know, all of these shows involve uh, sorting, uh, pricing, loading into my uh, van, hauling things around. I haul uh, roughly uh, right at 3,000 pounds worth of merchandise to uh, most shows. It depends on the, the booth size, but... Uh, generally I try and get the same booth size so it's it's a lot of work uh, setup is about three hours uh, it, it takes to, to load unload and and make the the booth hopefully look pretty uh, uh, appealing or at least you know not look terrible and it's about the same teardown it's it's about a two hour uh, teardown so it goes a little quicker especially if you sell stuff so that's always nice um, so right there, you know, you've got uh, five hours plus your work day, which uh, usually they're pretty long. You know, if you can get by under 10 hours on, on one day at a show or flea market, that's pretty short. Uh, just working the floor during the show hours. And, um, you know, as far as what I sell, boy, it's all over the board. You know, I've gone up to these uh, this flea market and, and sold, um, you know, I've sold under a hundred dollars and I've sold over 3000 and, uh, you know, I've been doing it a long, long time, uh, over 30 years and I still, <laughs> there's still no rhyme or reason to these things, to, to any of them, as far as I know. Um, but it is a lot of fun. I get to meet a lot of people. I, uh, it's a lot of work and the older I get, uh, the heavier, those 60 pound comic boxes feel, uh, you know, the, the harder it is on my back, my knees, my neck, you know, none of, none of these shows are on nice plush carpet or, or uh, nice soft ground. You know, they're all on concrete. Uh, so there is a, there is a toll. So if you're thinking of, of setting up and if you're a little older and a little, little fatter than you're supposed to be, like I am, uh, boy, it adds up. It's about a week recovery time, uh, after any of these shows. And that's a three-day show. So next up is QuadCon. That's here in Des Moines. I've also done one in Fort Dodge and one in um, Cedar Falls, Iowa. Uh, but generally, I do the two here at Merle Hay Mall right here in Des Moines. Uh, the cost on that uh, is $315, $105 uh, a booth for 10 by 10 booth. Uh, does not include tables or chairs. They don't rent them. i got to bring my own. And I'll tell you, that's... That is terrible. You talk about slowing you down and adding extra work and extra weight, uh, haul tables around. It, it's just awful. It's um, Basically, it's the only show I do where there, there are no tables available to rent. I have to bring my own. And I hate doing shows with no tables. Now, they're very expensive. I understand uh, why they, they don't haul them in because it's ridiculously cost prohibitive now. Uh, uh, to rent uh, tables. So if you're uh, if you're a promoter, which I've promoted uh, several shows uh, down here in the Des Moines area for a long time, uh, you know our table bill to have a truckload of tables come in and and just rent them for three four days, and then you know they they come and you got to stack them and put them back. Anyway, uh, you know you're talking over over you know 
probably three thousand dollars for a large show or more uh, just for the tables and that's just to put like one one table in a booth so it's it's ridiculously cost prohibitive you're talking at least i would say twelve dollars a table and you know if you need uh 300 tables for a convention well you know do the math right you know that's a lot of money but it does slow you down so it's something that if you're going to start doing shows you know i use the uh, the folding tables the plastic topped ones uh they are heavy they are not a light table and if you don't use a little heavier table i can tell you right now they don't last long unless you have very light stuff but i have i have uh, you know comic books magazines and some heavier items and i use uh, locking glass display cases that are heavy so if you have a light flimsy uh, folding table um well you're going to be replacing that probably every i would i would say fifth or sixth show you know it might not even last a year if you do a lot of shows but that's that's quad con i usually do pretty well in the mall it's a different different crowd there uh, it's the most consistent uh, sales of the cons i do which um i think just because there's a steady crowd at a mall show uh it's a lot of uh, uh you know different people that just happen to be there i don't think it's a destination for the show itself necessarily uh downsides to that besides uh you know hauling it in and and the extra work um problem with mall shows any shows really but mall shows seem to be worse is you do have stuff that just seems to walk off without getting paid for and uh you know sometimes i'll i'll throw some junk out on the floor just you know if they're going to rip something off it's going to be something i don't care about uh, but you do have to track your stuff at any of the shows but mall shows just i don't know what it is seem to have a little little higher rate of things disappearing so that's always frustrating uh, but very consistent uh, sales on that and probably on the same level of the uh, the quad con shows or the uh, uh, the mini cons here in uh, Johnston Iowa suburb of Des Moines um, and those are run by the Iowa Comic Book Club I'm I'm in the Iowa Comic Book Club I I used to help promote those shows with uh with another guy for a lot of times and I I just got old basically and, and didn't want to do it anymore um and uh, that's about the same cost. I think it's sixty-five bucks a uh, a table, uh, roughly on that. And I usually get five tables there. Uh, crowd's a little smaller uh, at that one. It's not uh, as crowded as the flea market or the mall shows, but you have got a little more of a, uh, I guess, an interested market or uh, interested shopper. You know, they're there for a specific reason. Uh, so I usually do okay there. Um, not i would say it's somewhere probably dollar wise it's probably one of my lower revenue uh shows but uh it's simple it's easy it's in a hotel uh, it does have carpet so one of the few places i go to it sets up that has carpet and it's a lot smaller it's also uh, some of the smallest uh, shows i do are the mini con uh, but i see a lot of regulars and we get to talk comics and things and and uh, so that's a lot of fun uh, so level up from that, uh, quite a ways up from that really is the Des Moines Con. Uh, uh, ben Penrod puts that on. He's got shows all over the country, and he came last year uh, to Des Moines for the first time. And uh, and that's what I would call a medium uh, size show. We had about 9,000 people come through the door. Uh, I don't know how many dealers were there. I was too busy to walk around. Uh, I know it's expanded. We've got the Des Moines Con coming up. I think it's... Uh, uh, June 2 and 3 or 3 and 4 that first weekend in June this year uh, so I know he's expanded uh, the the dealer roster quite a bit and um, that's an expensive show uh, that's 600 bucks for two 10 by 10 booths so the square footage price is quite a bit more uh, than the other shows and uh again they usually i think they gave me two tables one per booth but i i bring extra tables to that uh that's a very high revenue show for me or at least it was last year uh one thing about shows is they're very inconsistent at times and um you know the regular shows don't bring as much peak money so like the mini con quad con flea market but they're usually a little little more steady 
on your overall income. The once a year shows, you know, for whatever reason, if you if you miss on it, you know, something happens or whatever it is, just the weather, the weekend, uh, who knows. Um, you know, you can you can hit a grand slam or you can completely whiff and and do terrible. And the cost is quite a bit higher now. Uh, Des Moines Con. Uh, you know, I mentioned hotels for the uh, flea market. I don't, I don't have any hotel costs for QuadCon, and I don't for Des Moines Con. Uh, but I tell you what, the folks that do, I just want to read this. And remember, this is Des Moines. This isn't New York. This isn't Dallas. Uh, this is, you know, this is a smaller city. And uh, so the the cheapest. Here, sorry about the paper. So the cheapest right now. This is for Des Moines Con. If you want to uh, reserve a room, this is this is dealer rate. Uh, by the way. Uh, uh, there's one a half mile away. It's $189 is, is the cheapest. And it just goes up from there. And there's another one, $199. Uh, then let's see, $209, $249, $269, and $279. That's per night. So, you know, if you're paying uh, two booths, uh, plus, you know, say at least two nights, probably three nights, but at least two nights of hotel, uh, you know, you're going to have... 900 to a thousand dollars into the show without without selling one one item and of course that doesn't include food doesn't include transportation costs and things like that so uh pretty pricey um but still a, a very reasonably priced show uh we'll see you know if if uh, if that goes up or not next year they do tend to to take big jumps in um in cost every year they seem to raise the price on it so that's something else on these these mid to larger size shows you might might see some big price jumps on some stuff and then what happens it's really frustrating you know wizard world was here for three years i never set up at it too expensive uh even in my own backyard and they they were here three years and it started out uh okay I don't want to say it started out gangbusters because I don't think they, they really had the crowd they wanted to. Uh, but they kept raising the price. Dealers didn't show up after the first year. The dealer count went down. Cost went up, and it, and it just fizzled out. And that's kind of the danger you have. So you'll see some of these conventions. Uh, you know, you want to kind of get in the, uh, the first year like we did here in Des Moines. And then you can kind of see, you know, how things go. And and if it is a great show, it's really hard to get into. You have to wait for somebody to drop off. you got to get on a waiting list. Uh, but, you know, if, if you can get off, you know, when the getting is still good or, you know, when you think things are going to go south, uh, that's always a tough call on that. Um, since it's here in my backyard and I don't have the hotel and other costs, I'll probably always at least consider doing this show, but I am looking forward to it. They got a great guest list. Uh, but again, a lot of work, uh, 12, 14 hour days. They do let me set up the day before, which is wonderful. Uh, but it's still probably three to four hours setup time on that. And then the last, this is in Des Moines again. So just, just, to, just to be clear. Uh, the last one, this is a brand new show. And uh, it's it's run by Galaxy Con. Now, if you're familiar with anime manga, they're kind of the Wizard World for the uh, anime manga uh, fans. Uh, mainly East Coast um, based, you know, Virginia and uh, I think Richmond. They have one. There's a few other locations. I don't I don't know five or six maybe. Uh, for some reason, they're coming to Des Moines for the first time. Um, in September so just uh, what about six six months from now and um, I've got the dealer packet right right in front of me and it it's it's long I'm not gonna bore you with it uh, so this is in the same same exact building same exact rooms as Des Moines Con okay so exactly the same spot where they're gonna have this show as Des Moines Con uh, in June and here are the fees. So, and again, this is a national show. So this would be a Wizard World level level show on it, okay? So the lowest priced, lowest priced booth. 10 by 10 booth, $695. $695 for one booth. 
and then that's in the back of the room so on the national shows you pay extra if you want an end cap if you want to be by the front where people come in um so you know it, it's kind of pay to play you know and hopefully pay to win right if you're if you're spending this kind of money well the front booth so the premier booth they call it um and this is the same size 10 by 10 so this booth is not any larger than the 700 hundred dollar booth and that's sixteen hundred ninety five dollars sixteen hundred ninety five dollars over over twice the cost of your back row booth is is what a lot of people call them and then if you want uh, say you're an artist or you're an artisan they call it or maybe you make costumes or craft person or at some of these shows and this is this is what I'm concerned is going to happen you know you got your gutter salesman and your massage chairs and your chiropractors and stuff that have nothing to do uh, with the show um, you know that's six hundred and twenty five dollars and that's for an eight by ten booth so that's actually smaller than the dealer spot right uh, was that 20 square feet 10 10 yeah so it'd be 20 square foot less than a dealer booth at 8 by 10 and that's 625 dollars and that's animate animate Des Moines that's the name of it I just printed this out last night and that's kind of what got me uh, uh, thinking about um, about this whole topic of being a show dealer and you're, you're talking if you just get two booths and I gotta tell you unless you deal with some very small stuff I mean, even if it's DVDs and trinkets and things, a 10 by 10 booth is not very big, guys. I could not do a, I could not do a show, um, you know, in a 10 by 10 booth. I, it just, I couldn't bring enough uh, uh, stuff to make it worthwhile. You know, you'd have to either bring uh, high-end stuff and leave the cheap stuff at home, or you'd have to bring all cheap stuff. And anyway, uh, I think it's very difficult uh, for most dealers on a 10 by 10 booth, but there are a lot that do it and seem to enjoy it um, I guess it just depends on your tolerance for uh, you know profit and loss and out-of-pocket cost um, But again, this is just here in Des Moines, you know, we are a very small market uh, What the costs are now for Kansas City for Planet Comic Con for the Twin Cities Con which Ben does that too It's the same uh, uh, same promoter that does the Des Moines Con does when I think it's November You know and then you talk about you know things like Baltimore, New York uh, Orlando, uh, you know Dallas, LA, San Diego They only they only go up from there. So I would have to guess at some of those major shows You know your low-end show is going to be What seventeen hundred dollars for animate Iowa, which would be the the Galaxy Con series would be the by far the uh, the most prestigious and uh, uh, largest show uh, in in Iowa. Um, you know, it, it's just something to keep in mind, uh, and I love them. I'd rather go and and shop at a show now, but my problem is I go to these shows, and uh, I don't know. Give me your comments on on any of this, but. You know, when I go to a show, I just see so much of the exact same thing at the exact same price. And most of it I can get online 20 to 30% less than what I can buy it for at a show. Uh, and and one of these, you know, the reason is you've, you've heard the cost, right? So the overhead is not cheap. You know, running a retail store, brick and mortar is not cheap. These shows are not, not cheap either. These are, these are not low cost. And so it gets a little frustrating for me, and then they then they go with the uh, the voice actors and and things like that, which I really enjoy the voice actors, the artists, people that be in the business. I really do like going to that, but that's another cost that just keeps going up and up and up and up. Forty to sixty bucks for an autograph, and and on up from there. Uh, so these are premium events, and I think as a dealer, uh, you know, you really need to know. Uh, the market that you are in, you know, uh, here for me, it'd be central Iowa and, uh, you know, the surrounding area, most of the state and up towards Minnesota anyway. Um, you know, for me to go out and spend 1600 bucks on a booth, sure, it's a write-off, but it's still a cost. Uh, you know, I got to admit, I'm really struggling with this. I'd love to set up at, at a show. I've never set up. I've been to many of the anime Iowa shows and uh, a few others, but 
I'd really like to set up as a dealer at a uh, uh, anime manga based show. Uh, so when I first got this packet, I was really super pumped, uh, especially because it's in my own backyard, right? Uh, but I don't know. I, I got to tell you, I don't think I'm going to be signing up. I'm going to be buying tickets. My kids and I are going to go. We're going to have a great time. Uh, probably drop way too much money on autographs and, and uh, uh, meet and greets and things. But uh, as far as setting up as a dealer, oi, you know, I'm going to have just here in my backyard, you know, I'm going to have close to $2,000 if I go at the big booth. Otherwise, I'm going to have probably, uh, you know, eight to nine hundred dollars in cost uh for something that is literally a, a 10 to 12 minute drive to get to uh so that's something and i and i harped about that in the podcast oh i don't know what number that was anymore about uh you know when you want to be a, a a online reseller or a reseller about knowing your costs and uh, and definitely you know you need to track this if you're doing any type of shows don't just track sales um you know, because you can have one one good sale, which you know is always fantastic, but it kind of skews your perspective of it because you think, you know, boy, we had that good sale last year or two years ago. I'm going to go back and see if, you know, and if that doesn't happen, if you're not consistent on your revenue, um, you know, you're probably either going to have to look and and bring different product because you're not don't have the right product for the market, uh, or you just have to try a different show you know uh where your costs aren't quite so high and uh and that's it that's all i've got uh hopefully not a rant or a rave or anything bad it's just kind of an info well i want to say infomercial because i am not uh, i am not endorsing any of these shows i'm not getting paid a penny for any of these shows it's just something uh, i thought i might share with you guys uh just so you have some kind of idea the basic uh cost uh uh, set up time and things like that just to do a single show uh, if you got any questions comments you know leave them uh, give me some other ideas to talk about podcast wise uh, always look forward to that i'll do my best on it and um, you know that's it for now check out our videos check out our other podcasts and thanks for watching